Welcome to Behavioral Health Services. My name is Jennifer Wolf Kimball, and I'm the Communications Specialist for the Behavioral Health Services Department. As a part of the LC 101 curriculum, we'll be sharing a bit about our department and how we work to improve behavioral health in Larimer County. During our presentation, I will provide some background art about our department and how we came to be, and we'll also explain our role as fiscal agents for designated funding directed to behavioral health in our community. Then I'll turn things over to Lori Stolen to talk about a critically important project that BHS oversees, which is the development of a behavioral health campus and the construction of the first building on that campus, Acute Care. And she'll also talk about the future plans for, the, for that campus. And then Jessica Plummer, our program manager, will share some information about our Impact Fund grant program and explain how we invest in community behavioral health. First, I'd like to start with a brief definition for behavioral health. You're probably familiar with mental health and substance use, and the term behavioral health includes both of these and also refers to the continuum of care to address both that ranges from prevention to intervention to treatment and recovery. In 2018, county voters passed a 20-year ballot initiative that designates funding for behavioral health purposes. That funding equates to about 25 cents on a, um, for every $100 of the sales and use tax. The ballot language presented a multi-tiered approach for our community that includes the provision of care, the expansion and enrichment of community services, as well as the construction of behavioral health facilities. Our department was established in 2019 to serve as the fiscal agent of that sales and use tax funding. Our purpose statement is to increase awareness of and access to affordable and appropriate behavioral health care. And the mission of our department is to responsibly um, invest in community driven work to increase access to behavioral health services and improve outcomes for all Larimer County community members. Our department consists of six team members. There's Lori Stolen, who is the director, Taylor, uh, Kelly, who is the implementation manager, which means she works on data and uh, project management. Jessica Plummer, who oversees our impact fund grant program. Summer Leeming, who handles our accounting and finance. Ryan Barstow, who handles contracts and departmental logistics, and myself, who oversees communications. Our department essentially has three funding pathways to meet the objectives of our mission statement. The Behavioral Health Services at Longview Campus, the grant program, and a bridge fund, which is a future initiative that we'll talk a little more about later. The 20-year initiative has been broken into five-year increments, and we're currently nearing the end of phase one, which included the establishment of our department, creating the framework for the grant program, and the planning, design, and construction of an acute care facility. And we've begun the planning and preparation for phase two, where we'll see the acute care uh, facility fully operational, which will allow us to direct funding that was going to the construction process to a bridge fund. So we'll be creating the framework for that, that as well. And we'll also continue the planning and preparations for the next project on the behavioral campus, as well as continued improvements for our grant program. This is a high level overview of our departmental budget the sales and use tax generates approximately $20 million per year for behavioral health in Larimer County. And that money is used to fund our grant program. Um, it's directed towards contracts, construction, and the services for the behavioral health campus and our departmental administrative and operational expenses. You can learn more about our annual budget by reviewing our um, annual report, which we share through our website yearly. Uh, while we had your attention, we also wanted to mention that if you visit our website, you can also view our behavioral health dashboard. The dashboard shows community level indicators for the state of behavioral health across Larimer County and throughout the state. 
Those indicators include things like suicide deaths, overdoses, emergency room visits, and youth attitudes and experience with suicides um, in Colorado and in Larimer County. Uh, you can, as a funder of behavioral health services and programming, we keep an eye on these indicators as one of the ways to identify community need and help with our strategic planning process. If you're interested in seeing some of the community level data related to behavioral health, we encourage you to visit our dashboard. An expanded version of this dashboard can also be found through the Health, Wellbeing, and Resilience Data Dashboard, which is hosted by the Department of Health and Environment. Now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Lori Stolen, who will share some information about the Behavioral Health Services at Longview Campus, um, the one that I mentioned earlier. Lori? Thanks, Jennifer. It was a wonderful foundation of our department and sort of what has gotten us to where we are today. As you can see on the presentation, this is a master footprint of our campus. It has some opportunities for us to dream and to build out partnerships with our community. There's a lot of flexibility of what could go on this campus throughout the 20 year initiative. And we have some spaces that are reserved for some ideas that we have thought would uh, fulfill some needs and gaps in our community. Uh, the first building in the center, it's got a number two on it, is the acute care facility. It's a, we'll go into a lot more detail here in a few minutes, but it's a 60,000 square foot facility, and that takes up a large portion of the center of this campus uh, footprint. The second building uh, is our acute care facility, I'm sorry, is our ad adolescent care facility for youth. And then we also have some space for training, conference center, and possibly primary dental vision, a variety of different services that might serve the population that is, is seeking those levels of service at the campus. The county owns this 20, uh, this 40 acre campus and it is dedicated to behavioral health. So we look forward to building out partnerships throughout the initiative and um, make this campus an opportunity for folks to fill needs that they are not able to connect to in our community. It is located at the northwest corner of Taft Hill and Trilby Roads. And like I said before, our acute care facility um, it is intended to address the critical gaps in crisis services. And we have contracted out the services in the building to uh, Summit Stone Health Partners. So we're gonna take a look around the acute care building. We have been working with Page, Sutherland Page, our architect partners, and Hazelden Construction Company on the design and build of this, what we think is a beautiful building. This is a rendering of the front of the building and you can see the large um, expansive lobby in the, in the public entrance in the center of the picture and off to the left or what would be the south side of the building is where our emergency personnel entrance and our crisis walk-in entrance will be to the facility. We'll take a look at a couple more pictures and renderings here as we go through. These are some actual photographs of the construction as it's been taking place um, over the past year and a half. We do look forward to taking occupancy of the building this summer and then taking first clients in early December of this year. So we are getting close to opening up this new facility. We'll take a look inside now and you can see a few interior renderings of the building. Um, as you go into the front lobby, you can look straight through the building, um, through the lobby in a, in a nice contemplation lounge and some comfortable seating for folks um, into the landscape and the, the design of our, our the backyard, if you will, the group seating and walking paths. And there's a small amphitheater and lots of opportunity for people to connect to nature um, in, in the back portion of the, of the landscaping of this building. We'll also have a physical fitness room in this building, as well as many different therapy rooms, a full service kitchen for food service that's planned for this building and all future buildings. This facility will also house a pharmacy and a lab, as well as the six levels of care that Summit Stone will be providing to clients as they come in. So here's just a few more of the renderings of spaces. 
uh, we found that there was one part of the building that didn't get as much natural light into the center of the building that we liked. And so we actually designed a, a light well, um, a center atrium that will have access to the outdoor. It's open up through the ceiling and that'll bring in a lot more natural light into some of those darker parts of the building. Um, we'll have large meeting space for up to 80 people uh, to be able to, to have conferences and trainings and, and meeting room. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring in folks from the community to, to utilize this meeting space. So as I mentioned, we are in partnership with Summit Stone, our largest behavioral health providers in the community to provide the six levels of care in the, in the facility itself. So now we can walk through what those six levels of care are. They're going to phase open the, the building itself. They've got about 200 staff to hire, and that is a, a large staff to, to manage all at once. So our plan is to open up the building with the behavioral health urgent care. Now, of course, that will be 24 seven services for all ages. Anyone that is in a self-defined crisis would be um, able to come to this facility and be assessed, triaged, and then determine whether uh, what the next level of care would be. Upon opening, we will also offer care coordination with the intention there being that as soon as someone comes in, uh, regardless of what their situation is, they would be assigned a care coordinator and that care coordinator would immediately start a discharge plan, starting to understand what really is the level of need for that individual person upon their release of this facility. We will also have a medication assisted treatment program. And like I had mentioned before, a pharmacy and a lab to be able to understand um, the, the pharmacy side of treatment and provide education to folks uh, whenever they are starting to stabilize on meds or if they need to you know, have a prescription for a new medication, there'll be an opportunity for discussion with a pharmacist and a therapist um, to familiarize clients with that. There will also be two levels of withdrawal management, which is sometimes also referred to as detox in this facility. And then crisis stabilization is a specific level of care for folks that um, are in a self-defined crisis, regardless of whether it's a, a mental health crisis or a substance use disorder crisis. And then as we get stabilized and familiar with the building and we've opened up those levels of care, the future phases of that will open will be an intensive residential treatment program, uh, an opioid treatment program, and ultimately an expansion of the, the existing services to so opening up more beds in the levels of care uh, across the, the facility itself. We do plan for this facility to be a center of excellence. Um, we are, our intention is it to be a teaching facility. Uh, Summit Stone has already started a very robust internship program to help uh, create the curriculum and open up opportunities for students across a variety of disciplines uh, to be able to come to this facility and get training and gain experience in working in a community center um, with, with folks that have behavioral health issues. When we talk about who can receive care at this facility, it really is intended for anybody that's experiencing a behavioral health crisis. Uh, we will do the assessment, we will do the triage and determine what the next appropriate step is for anyone that comes to get care in this facility. We do have some levels of care that they might be transitioned to within the facility. And there also may be different levels of care, whether it's hospitalization or back to community for outpatient care that we would be doing referral to as well. Sometimes we get the question on how people may access care at this facility. And so we have done a, quite a bit of research and communication with our community partners. And we have a good understanding oftentimes how people get to crisis care. So we have created strong partnerships with our first responders, our co-responders and our ambulance services through our largest healthcare providers in the community. And we have a specific entrance for law enforcement and ambulances to do drop-offs at this facility. And we also know that oftentimes family and friends are involved in the transportation of a, a loved one to uh, what currently they're, they're sending to them to a hospital or um, sometimes not always the right level of care. And so we will have a, a walk-in crisis entrance at this facility as well, in, in addition to the, the public lobby. 
Um, so you'll be able to walk in, you'll be able to have family and friends drive and or have law enforcement or ambulance uh, drop off at this facility. So we're talking just a moment about uh, a project that's in development as part of phase two of our initiative. One of the next buildings that we plan to design and build on this, uh, on this campus is our adolescent care facility. There is a large group of community members that has come together as a guidance team to help inform uh, the need for programming in our community. We have had a lot of conversation with youth in our community about the design of this building to ensure that we had their voice at the table when we were creating the space to make sure that it was welcoming and it was approachable and it felt like it was what would serve um, youth between the ages of 10 and 18 the best. And so we're excited to have uh, the vision of our community youth in the design of this building. The adolescent care building is intended to be 16 beds. It is meant for respite, short-term care for, um, for youth. It's intended to be an average length of stay of five to seven days. So this is not intended to be a longer-term residential treatment program for youth. Um, more about partnership with our communities, providing day programming before school, during school, after school, outpatient programming, and then to have those 16 beds for respite care. And we would also plan to go out for a request for proposals and contract with a vendor for the services that would be provided within this adolescent care facility, like we did with the uh, first building, our acute care building. So you'll have to stay tuned for the timeline of the design and build and opening of our adolescent care facility. And you're always welcome to come back to our website at larimer.org forward slash behavioral health to get updates on all of the happenings within our department. I'm going to turn it now over to Jessica Plummer, our program manager, to talk about our impact fund and our bridge fund. There you go, Jessica. Thanks, Lori, and thanks, Jen. Hello, everyone. My name is Jessica Plummer, and I'm the program manager for Larimer County's Behavioral Health Services Department, and I oversee our impact fund grant program. The Impact Fund Grant Program is what allows Larimer County to invest in community-based behavioral health services. Each year, we provide grants to organizations that are working to improve access to behavioral health services, reduce stigma around mental health and substance use, and address the root causes of behavioral health issues in our community. By collaborating with community partners and care providers, we work to expand access to those most marginalized in our community, raise awareness about services available in the community, and focus resources on pressing needs such as suicide prevention, workforce development, criminal justice alternatives, and youth serving programs. We'll talk about how BHS utilizes community informed decision making on another slide. To date, we have issued 152 grant awards to over 60 organizations, totaling just over $8.9 million in the past four years. And you can see that breakdown year over year since the grant program's inception in 2019. You can also see the trend in the award amounts going up each year, uh, but we plan to keep it a staying consistent around the $3 million mark moving forward. Referring back to the initial slide, BHS relies on community-informed decision-making to determine the areas of focus through the input of our three advisory groups, each representing a valuable perspective on behavioral health. Funding recommendations are reviewed by our Behavioral Health Policy Council and approved by our Board of County Commissioners. You can learn more about becoming a member of our advisory groups at laramore.gov slash boards. Uh, members generally serve three-year terms and work together to identify the most pressing behavioral health needs in our community. Their input and insights are then used to prioritize funding areas for the grant program. We call these targeted grants. As you can see, we offer two types of grants. Uh, the first one is targeted grants defined by our advisory groups are designed to address gaps in behavioral health with concentrated focus and funding. These five areas uh, are what our advisory groups uh, listed below are what our advisory groups have uh, determined are targeted areas of focus. Responsive grants are for organizations that support the behavioral health of the community uh, align with our funding priorities, but do not fall within these targeted grant areas. So behavioral services is responsive to other community 
um, behavioral health needs, addressing funding priorities such as access and affordability, stigma reduction, prevention, early identification, intervention, and quality care. Within the alternatives and interventions in criminal justice targeted grant area, we highlight the best application for the Gary A. Darling Grant Award, which is for programs that attempt to disentangle behavioral health from the criminal justice system. This honorary award was created in 2020 in recognition of Gary Darling's exemplary career and years of service in this area. Uh, this here is a visual of our grant funding investment portfolio from 2021 that shows how our funding was supporting organizations and programs across the behavioral health continuum of care. As you can see, about half of the funding is going towards upstream efforts in prevention, promotion, early identification, and intervention. As far as our annual grant cycle, we have a pretty quick turnaround. We accept applications in June. Review them in July and August, make awards in early September, and distribute funding in October. Currently, our grant awards are for a one year period of performance, and applicants need to reply, reapply each year for funding. Now, I'd like to introduce you to our third funding pathway, which we call the Bridge Fund. This third funding pathway and future initiative is intended to remove barriers to care by supporting behavioral health related areas such as financial support, co-pays, transportation, and other needs to expand access and community partnerships. The Bridge Fund will be uh, further defined once the Longview Acute Care Facility is open on the campus and is in operation and community needs are better known at that time. I wanna thank you for allowing me to share a little bit about our Impact Fund Grant Program and future Bridge Fund Initiative and I'll hand it back to Jen for more information on how to stay connected. Great, thank you so much, Lori and Jessica. Um, if you would like to continue to watch what's happening in the behavioral health space in our community, um, I encourage you to keep an eye on our website. There you can find more information about what's happening out at the campus. We also post our annual reports there that give more detailed information about the um, activities of our department. We also spotlight some of our grantee organizations, so it's a great way to learn more about those organizations as well. Um, as we inch our way closer to the opening of acute care at the end of this year, we'll be offering opportunities for the community to come and tour the facility and the details for that will also be on our website. Um, if you um, use social media, you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter, where we share departmental updates and community resources for mental health and substance use services and programming. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email us at bhs at larimer.org, and we will reply to your inquiry as quickly as possible. I thank you so much for your time. It was really wonderful to share more information about our department, and I hope you enjoy the rest of LC 101. Thank you.